Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I'm going to be reviewing some brand new products by ALF Cosmetics. So a little more than a week ago I actually did put an order through and I was so excited to try out these new products and I'm so ready to also review them in today's video. I did pick up the brand new Soft Glam Satin Foundation the $8 foundation. I mean, we're going to be talking about all of the details on this foundation in this video. And I'm of course going to be doing a wear test, but I also have some other really exciting things. Uh, I actually did purchase a new primer, a bronzer, some new blushes, a new lip product. I mean, it's going to be very, very exciting. I really hope you are going to enjoy this video. In case you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos. And in case you're interested in picking up some of these products, I am going to be linking them all in my description box below alongside with some other like discount codes. I just wanted to let you guys know that I did pick up all of these products myself. This was not sent to me by Alf, nor were the other products that I did put on my face today. I'm going to be also, you know, listing them in my description box down below in case I am using a different product brand and ALF for a certain category. And if you are shopping through my links, thank you so, so much. This is going to directly support the channel. So I definitely do appreciate it. Also just wanted to quickly mention if you are looking for a product review on ALF and you're not finding it in today's video, chances are really, really high that it's going to be in my latest video because not that long ago, I actually did make a video about their brand new camo CC cream, the hydrating version, and I did compare it to the original version. And in that video, I also used a bunch more e.l.f. products. So I'm also going to be leaving the link to that video in my description box down below. I'm going to be leaving it in the cards right here and I'm going to put it at the end of my video in the end title as well. But yeah, without no further ado, I would say I'm just going to go barefaced because I cannot wait to actually show you guys these brand new products by e.l.f. Okay, you guys, so I'm barefaced right now. So let's actually start off with prepping and priming the skin. Now, because I do want to use the brand new foundation by e.l.f., I actually do want to use the Power Grip Primer, but I also did pick up a new released primer by them because when I scrolled through their new section on their website, I saw that they came out with a new primer and I decided to pick it up. So I've already applied this to my face about 30 minutes ago. And the reason being is I don't really want this to be the sole primer because I am not too experienced with the primer just yet. So I'm not sure how the foundation would actually perform with solely this primer on because I only tested it with this one, but I still wanted to apply it, you know, and show you this new product. And I'm just going to show you some B-roll footage of it. So this is the new Stay Cool Primer Stick, and this retails for $7. So here is the product. Now on their website, this is described as a cooling gel stick primer infused with aloe water. So it preps the skin for smooth makeup application. It's infused with refreshing aloe water to hydrate skin. Mass-free application, perfect for those on the go. Now I did apply this primer like 30 minutes ago. I'm going to show you the footage and I feel like it's definitely sticky. Like it has a tack, but it's nothing compared to the power grip primer tack. So when you apply the stick, the stick definitely has a cooling sensation. It almost feels a little bit more balmy than gel like. However, it's not over the top, like greasy or oily. I feel like it has a really nice texture to it though. When I applied it, I really enjoyed it. I do think that this could make a great primer in and of itself, but I just wanted to see how it would work as a prep step today. I'm definitely going to be playing around with this a lot more, especially during the summertime. I'm usually not the biggest fan of a stick sort of primer. Like I kind of prefer having a pump, you know, just for hygienic reasons. But also I try to just wipe off the product after I have used it. So, you know, just for hygienic reasons. But I will say, I feel like my skin looks very juicy. It looks a little bit glowy. Now, I don't necessarily love that. I feel like this is definitely not a blurring stick, okay? This is kind of giving my skin like a very smooth surface. So I'm not mad at it, but I'm just a little bit scared that 
this might not be enough so i would kind of prefer using this as a skin prep step and then apply an additional primer i feel like if you have drier skin maybe you are gonna love this a little bit more than i do I just really adore this primer. This is the Power Grip primer with 4% niacinamide. I did review this in my latest um, video where I did a full face of e.l.f. products, almost a full face. I've also realized that with this primer in particular, you don't need much product. So I'm gonna be applying this real quick before we're gonna get to the foundation. But yeah, just look at that. That is syrupy one pump will suffice i don't want to overuse this product necessarily i just want to use enough to especially on my nose because i feel like foundations tend to wear off on my nose and on my chin and i'm just going to use a little bit more for the forehead again not much product at all all right i think that should be enough oh yeah this is much stickier than this although this has a decent amount of grippiness to it as well. I'm also going to quickly apply this Globe Reviver Lip Oil by them. I have this in the shade Honey Talks. It is very sheer though. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of that. I mean, I'm going to go in with a different product later on, a newer product for the lips. But I just want to have something on my lips to have my lips a little bit hydrated. But let's move on to the foundation. So this is the new Soft Glam Satin Foundation and this retails for $8. I mean, the price point, definitely amazing. And I really wanted to try this foundation out because e.l.f. actually has one of my favorite foundations from the drugstore already in their line and that is the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. Now I will say mine is so old, it's not looking healthy anymore, but I used to really enjoy this foundation. It's also an oil-free foundation with medium coverage, so I'm wondering if they're gonna get rid of this and if this one is gonna replace this one. Maybe, I'm not sure. I used to have this in the shade 210, natural with neutral undertones. I really liked that shade on me. The only thing I did not enjoy about this foundation per se is the fact that this had some fragrance. This definitely had quite a strong scent to it. Not my favorite thing. It smelled like cheap perfume, to be honest. So that was always something that was a little bit of a downside but I enjoyed the formula. So I was really intrigued to actually pick up this new formula instead because also I did check the ingredient list and it looks like it's still oil-free and it also does not have the fragrance, the perfume anymore. So let's have a look at this new foundation. What are the claims? What is the shade range like? And then let's apply it to my face. So on the website, they are claiming it's a long lasting hydrating liquid foundation that delivers just right, medium buildable coverage and a satin finish. They are also saying it's a breathable formula, doesn't look or feel cakey, infused with 1% hydrating hibiscus complex plus pomegranate, blueberry and goji berry extracts. It's apparently great for everyone, basically for dry, oily and combination skin. We we'll shall see. My skin is a little bit more, I would say, normal as in balanced, but I definitely do lean more on the oilier side. I'm definitely not dry, just to give you some reference here. Also, I really do enjoy the shade range. This comes in 36 shades. And guess what? I did pick up the right shade for once. <laughs> I'm so happy that I made the decision to go with the shade 20, which is described as a light with cool undertones. This is a really good shade match on me. I'm really happy about that. I've already tried out this foundation four times. So this is going to be the fifth time and I'm going to tell you, I actually like it. I really do. So I'm going to apply it to one side of my face first. Now the consistency is, it's quite creamy. It's a little bit thicker and creamy. As you can see, it's not going to run down my finger. So let's apply it to this side first. I'm going to use a dampened sponge to blend it out. I am so impressed. For this being an $8 foundation, this looks beautiful on the skin um honestly i've tried this out a couple of times now and i always enjoyed it i really did such a good shape match and great coverage straight off the bat blends out like impeccable 
nothing to complain about. I'm gonna use a little bit more product for my forehead. I mean, just look at that. That looks so stunning. I am so impressed. This looks beautiful. Gave me a really solid sort of like high medium coverage straight off the bat. I mean, I can still see my skin poking through just a little bit, but in general, I feel like this is amazing. The way this looks on my skin, my skin looks really healthy, really just refreshed and not over the top dewy or glowy. I feel like this is a very natural sort of finish. You know, it's definitely not a flat matte. It's definitely not over the top dewy. It just looks like skin and it also does not look makeup y. Like it looks really beautiful on my skin. And yeah, I'm so impressed by this foundation. So let's do it on the other side as well. And let's see if I want to build this one up. Um, I might want to do a little bit more like over here because I am a little bit more red on this side of my face. Um, but I think this is evening out my skin tone quite a lot. I will say the shade oxidizes just a little bit. Not to an extreme, but just a little bit, okay? So just be a little bit mindful about that. But I feel like it, it kind of looks better on this side. It just oxidizes, I would say, by like 15%. Not a lot at all. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so impressed. Like, this looks so beautiful. Like, I really, really love it. Amazing. But I'm going to be, like, using a little bit more product. And I'm going to see how buildable it is. Usually, for my everyday life, this would be enough coverage for me. Like, I'm just going to go in with a little bit more product to show you how much coverage you can actually achieve by building it up. And let's see how it's going to perform. I don't want to overuse this product because, I mean, it does have a little bit more of a creamier texture, though. It does not necessarily have, like, a self-setting property. Like, it's not drying down, so you can definitely build this one up. But it's also not, like, sitting around on your skin to a point where it would bother me. I don't really need to build it up on the forehead. What am I doing? Like, that's the one spot where I don't really need more product. But hey, we're just going to build it up slightly. Definitely do want to build it up on my cheeks. And maybe a little bit on my chin. I mean, coverage-wise, this has definitely given me a little bit more coverage with the second layer. It's so nice. It still looks so beautiful. So I'm going to do that on the other side as well. I feel like my skin looks very perfected, very pretty. But we'll shall see how well it's performing on my skin, right? Because that's always the test with a foundation. How well is something performing? That's what's really important to me. That's what it comes down to. So I do want to apply a little bit of concealer underneath my eyes. I really dislike the e.l.f. concealers. I've never found a concealer that works for me. So I'm just going to go in with my not so much of a drugstore product. With my more high-end a concealer by Natasha Denona. I'm just going to apply a little bit underneath my eyes. I don't want to apply it anywhere else on my face, obviously, because I want to show you how well this foundation is performing. So I'm just going to blend this out, put an eye primer on my eyes, and then I'm going to be right back and we can powder this face. So I have tried out this foundation with a couple of different powders. Now, I also did try it with the ALF HD powder and I will say I felt like the result with the ALF powder wasn't necessarily as good as with some of the other powders. It wasn't like a disaster, but because I wanted to use as many ALF products, you know, as possible, I feel like for today I'm just going to be doing one side of my face with the HD powder and then the other side I'm going to do with the Luna Beauty Universal Setting Powder in the shade Light. Because for me, sometimes powders can make all of the difference when it comes to the wear time. I do like this powder though. I will say for drugstore powder, this is beautiful. It's very finely milled and it's very blurring. This one, however, is a little bit better when it comes to the performance. 
with this foundation in particular. But yeah, I'm gonna be setting down this side of my face first with the ALF HD powder. So this e.l.f. powder is actually very, very pretty. The only thing I will say though, I always feel like whenever I'm applying this powder, I feel like it's almost soaking up the coverage on my cheeks again. I don't know what it is, but I can definitely see my skin poking through right here. So just keep that in mind when we are going to be doing the wear test. And I'm going to be using the Luna Beauty powder on the other side. This powder is also so finely milled. It's so like diffusing but it has a little bit more of a tint to it, whereas the e.l.f. powder is literally white slash translucent. Then let's see if there was any difference with the wear test result. To be honest with you though, I have not tried this method out, like an immediate comparison from one side to the next with different powders. Okay, I'm gonna brush off just a little bit of the excess because I always feel like I apply a little bit too much powder with my powder puff here. The result is so stunning. I really have to say, once this foundation is powdered down, it looks so beautiful, like so, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows off camera and then we are gonna be moving on to the new bronzer, the new blushes that I picked up by e.l.f. I will say I'm not gonna be using the e.l.f. brow product because if you watched my latest video, on e.l.f. You know that I did not enjoy that pencil whatsoever. So I'm just gonna be using the usual suspects. I'm gonna be using my Rare Beauty Brow Harmony pencil and then I'm gonna just go through my brows with the Kosas Air Brow in the shade Soft Brown. All right, you guys, so let's actually move on to putting some color onto my face. Let's move on to bronzing, contouring, blush, highlighter, all of that. So in terms of bronzers, I just realized that Alf recently did release like these bronzing drops for $12. Now, in general, I am not a fan of any like glowy sort of like bronzing drop situation. I don't really feel like that's a product meant for me. I'm definitely more of a powder girl. So I actually did pick up a powder version and this is the primer infused matte bronzer this is also quite a new product i assume this was released this year i think so this bronzer actually does exist in six different shades i don't know if i made the right choice here um this is the shade tan o'clock and it's described as a light shade there is also a fair shade if this is too deep for you but i will say i don't think this is my undertone this looks so yellow oh gosh i don't like that i do prefer more of a rosier undertone a little bit of like more of a red purple sort of like bronzer should i actually apply my halo glow beauty wand contour first because this is the shade fair slash light i think it's the lightest shade that you can get in this product i have reviewed this many times on my channel it's the one with the puff, the one that looks so disgusting. Oh my God, it's not looking great at all. But I feel like I might want to put a little bit of this onto my face before I'm going in with this very yellowish. I think it's a yellow bronzer. Maybe it's going to pull a little bit different on my skin. I don't know. I'm just going to quickly apply a little bit of the contouring shade just to maybe balance out the shade a little bit because I actually do enjoy this contouring product quite a lot. This looks a little bit more skin native on me and a little bit more cool toned. That's really what I prefer in my bronzers. So let's use the shade 10 o'clock. I am worried this might be too yellow for me. Hopefully it's gonna be alright on top of this contour. It's very warm. Oof very warm. I really think for $7, this is such a good powder formula. And I've tried out so many powder bronzers, so many powder blushes. This is fantastic. It's a very diffusing powder. It's very smooth. 
I actually really like it. I'm just not the biggest fan of this undertone here. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that it's so warm. Might not be ideal if you have a cooler leaning undertone. If you have more of like a warm undertone, you would probably adore this. So another fun product is actually the powder blushes that e.l.f. has recently released. And for the longest time I was looking at these, I was eyeing them, but I definitely did not make the jump. Also, I did try out their camo liquid blush that I really, really did enjoy. And I did feature that one in the other video. So I thought for today it could still be fun to actually try out these uh, powder blushes. So this is the primer infused matte blush and one of them retails for seven dollars. They do have this in six different shades. I did pick up three shades. I did pick up the shade Always Rosy. I also did pick up the shade Always Tempting and I did pick up the shade Always Crushing. So I already tried out one of these shades and I did try out the shade always rosy and always rosy is actually described as a muted rose sometimes rose shades rose tones can kind of lean a little bit orangey on me but this looks so beautiful this looks like an amazing sort of like nudie shade on me it really almost reminds me of maiden's blush by um, aramas an undertone it looks so pretty now listen i have not tried out these other two shades just yet i have not tried out the shade always tempting that one is actually described as a berry shade and the shade always crushing is described as a warm pink so i thought you know what maybe we could use both of these today i'm gonna be using the shade always tempting this looks like a shade that is completely up my alley to me it does not really look that much like a berry. I feel like it looks more like a mauve shade, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to use my blush brush. And I'm actually going to use this new uh, brush that I picked up by BK Beauty. It's the 112 brush. It's very small. So because I want to like try out these two shades together, you know, it might be... A little bit of a better idea that I'm using a smaller brush here. So this shade, I'm not sure how the pigmentation is here. I feel like these look so diffused, so beautiful on the skin. This is, I would say, a little bit pigmented, but not over the top. The shade um, Always Rosy was so nice. This was kind of like more of a buildable shade. And I really love buildable sort of blushes. I'm going to keep this shade because it looks a little bit deeper right i'm going to keep the shade quite towards the outer perimeters of my face i don't want to put that on my cheeks necessarily on the apples of my cheeks i'm just going to keep it right here and then on the apples of my cheeks i kind of want to go in with this other shade and see what we're going to end up with i'm going to go in a little bit further i'm going to slowly work with this Wow, okay, that looks pretty. I really adore this powder formula. It's so diffusing on the skin. It's almost shocking. Like, it's so beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. I love this shade. I'm gonna apply it on this side of my face too. It's a little bit more pigmented though than the other shade. I assume that this shade might be maybe kind of like like more suitable for deeper skin tones but if you are gonna go in a little bit more light-handed and slowly build it up you can definitely also use this on a lighter skin tone you know but this definitely has more pigmentation straight off the bat than um always rosy honestly the shade looks like a perfect summer shade as well I'm just going to apply this a little bit on my forehead though, a little bit more generous. I'm going to go over this bronzer because I feel like I can add a little bit of pinkiness, a little bit of red to it and maybe change the tone of this a little bit with a blush. So I'm going to go in with this other shade now, um, always crushing. I'm going to use the same brush. I just wiped it off slightly and let's see. 
Oh, this is pretty. This is so beautiful. These blushes, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. So stunning. The formula is amazing. Like, these look so diffusing on the skin. Like, very, very pretty. This shade, Always Crushing, definitely has a little bit less pigmentation on me, you know, right off the bat than Always Tempting, which is normal. This is definitely deeper, okay? So if you have a deeper skin tone, maybe you want to go for something like this. If you have a lighter skin tone, this is definitely buildable. This is one of my favorite, like, drugstore blush formulas that I've ever tried in terms of a powder blush. I mean, how excited can one be about a powder blush? I'm that girl. I'm going to be excited about a beautiful powder blush formula. And that leads me to the next thing, which is I don't have a highlighter product by e.l.f. And I don't have like any eye product. I do have their mascara that I did feature in my latest video on e.l.f. But I don't really want to apply that. I did not really enjoy that tubing mascara that they came out with. So I don't really want to use that today. So I'm going to be doing the rest of my makeup off camera and then I'll be back with the lip products but the rest I'm going to be linking the products the products that I'm going to be using for the rest of my face I'm going to be linking them in my description box and I'll be back in a second with the lip products all right you guys I am back I did not intend for this eye makeup to actually look as dramatic as it does I thought I would go in with this palette right here, Trick or Treat palette by Odin's Eye. And I really was so curious to use this quad, this shade in particular. I thought it would work so, so well with the lip product that I got by e.l.f. But it turned out to look a lot more, let's say, reddish berry than a muted mauve. And it looks very dramatic. Um, wow, okay. I did really not expect to come back looking as dramatic as I do right now. But I still think it's a very pretty look. But it's not necessarily what I actually wanted to do. So, well, um, I hope that the lip products are going to match with the eye dough. Because that's something that's always really important to me. So let's talk about these brand new lip liners that e.l.f. has come out with. So this is the Cream Glide lip liner and one of them retails for two dollars. So many of them are kind of like sold out constantly. So you really have to, you know, a sudden alert when they are restocking these lip liners because I feel like this is such great quality for the price point. Now look, I have three of them and in total there are eight shades. Eight shades in total. So I did keep the outer packaging just due to the fact that on the crayon itself, it does not say the shade name. So I got this in the shade Spill the Tea. And then I also picked up the shade Baddest Beige and the shade Mauve Aside. And the shade Mauve Aside is the lip liner that I want to use for today. I'm going to show you these swatched on my arm. This formula is actually really lovely. I actually really, really have enjoyed this. They are not the longest lasting ones in the world. You know, they are going to fade away a little bit, but not immediately. For solid like four to five hours, they have some really, really amazing staying power. And these are so creamy. Okay, so I'm going to apply the shade. not the best lip liner I've ever tried. I definitely do prefer something that is creamy but that kind of like does not slide around that much. This kind of slides around just a little bit you know. Um, very creamy. I actually do enjoy creamy lip liners but I want them to stay put and this one does have a little bit more of that slide effect. Like it's going to slide around just a little bit. I had to kind of like help myself with my lip brush a little bit just to adjust the lip liner slightly. I think the color is beautiful, it has a little bit of brown in here, okay? So this mauve is not necessarily like a purpley mauve, it's more of like a brownie mauve. Okay, but those were the lip liners, so let's actually move on to the brand new lip 
color product that I picked up by Elf. So this one is the Sun Boss Gloss SPF 25 and it retails for $7. So this is a brand new formula. This is basically a lip gloss with SPF in it. So I was really, really excited because I don't really have that many lip products with an SPF factor in here. Um, they have this in five different shades and I picked up the shade It's Your Mauve, which is described as a neutral mauve. Um, yeah, I hope it's going to match the eye look. I have not tried out this product just yet. So this one is going to be a first impressions. This looks like exactly the type of lip color that I do adore. So let's hope this has a little bit of pigment and I'm going to just apply it. Ooh, it's not doing the thing. It's not doing the stringy thing. This feels like a cushiony gloss. Wow. Like, I honestly thought this would be like a goopy sort of like texture. Oh no. Elf is killing it. Oh, I did not even read what this actually says. It says key ingredients, zinc oxide. And this is a mineral sunscreen? Really? Vitamin E? SPF like a gloss. This lip enhancing tinted lip gloss delivers mineral SPF 25 sun protection, buildable color and high shine finish. That's probably why this does not have like this like strong chemical sort of SPF scent because they are using a mineral filter. I love this color. I love this shade. This is so beautiful. This is exactly the type of like muted moviness that I adore. This is exactly the formula that I love. Wow. This has just blown my mind completely. I hope it has a little bit of staying power. Otherwise, I'm going to be reapplying it a little bit. This looks beautiful, has so much reflect to it, looks really incredible, has a decent amount of pigmentation as well. I honestly thought it would be more of a translucent product and it would be goopy. None of that is the case, which I'm so happy about. The only thing I will say, I feel like my lip liner does not necessarily match this shade 100%. I feel like this shade, uh, what was it called again? Move aside, this one right here is a little bit more warm toned than the lip color. I honestly wish this would exist in a little bit of a cooler shade to match this. So I'm going to go ahead and film the intro now and I'm going to come back at the end of my day. It is uh, around like 3 p.m. right now. So let's see. I'm going to try and do at least a six hour wear test with this foundation and I'll be back at the end of my day and I'm just going to share my final thoughts on these new products with you. Right, you guys, I am back. It is basically a quarter past midnight. So that means I have worn this foundation for nine hours. Oh, let's have a closer look. I have not touched this foundation up at all. By the way, I did reapply the lip gloss after dinner. I mean, it kind of wore off on my nose a little bit. I don't know what I was doing there. It looks like I touched my nose maybe. But otherwise, I feel like this foundation still looks pretty decent. I will say though, there was um, a striking difference in between where it got oily, on which side it got oily. So where I did use my Luna Beauty powder, I feel like this side is just looking a little bit better. It's not looking as shiny. As right here the side where I did use the elf powder the HD powder it got a little bit more shiny otherwise I feel like my foundation has slightly worn off on my chin but not completely I still feel like it looks pretty intact on my forehead it looks quite intact but overall I do feel like that this foundation did perform quite well this makeup did perform quite well I mean I can still see the blush on my face it just still looks really, really good. And it's one of the better wear tests that I've done this year so far. And I'm really happy about it. I've got to say, this is kind of a winner for me. And I did not think that I would love it as much as I actually do. I do think, you know, if you do use a good primer, if you are using a good strong setting powder, and maybe also include a setting spray, I didn't do that. Uh, today and I did not really try that out prior but I will definitely do that I feel like my lip liner though 
has pretty much worn off. Now, take into consideration that I was eating because when I eat, for some bizarre reason, my lip product just always says goodbye. It leaves the building. And I did not reapply the lip liner though. So the lip liner, I will say, did not perform the best. This one is not really that long lasting, but I'm not too mad at it for $2, it's fine. But that is something to take into consideration. Nonetheless, I really do enjoy the colors. This lip gloss though, this lip gloss with SPF is amazing. I did not have a weird taste in my mouth. I do assume it's because this is using a mineral filter. And I will say I love this color. I love the texture. I love how nourishing this is. So honestly, out of all of the products I've tried today, this might be my all-time favorite one. Then I also love the foundation, you know. And I really do love these blushes. These blushes are so beautiful. They are long-lasting. They are diffusing on the skin. They've got great pigmentation, great colors. I mean, I'm really surprised at these products that I chose this time around. I will say though, the bronzer, not quite the right color for me, to be honest. This is a product, I feel like I might be passing this on to a friend who has a little bit of a warmer undertone. But yeah, those were pretty much my final thoughts. So I would be really curious to know, have you tried out any of the products that were featured in today's video? Were you able to pick up some of these new releases? Please do drop me a comment down below. And also, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and also don't forget to ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos. And if you would like to check out my other video I made about e.l.f., I'm just gonna, you know, put it right here or here, somewhere here. But yeah, until next time, please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.